Navigating the collegiate sphere is pretty scary. Let's go over the top five questions you might have as an incoming computer science major or current computer science major, and my advice for you if you're asking yourself these questions. Hi, I'm Laura, a product manager working in tech, and on my channel I cover my life working in tech, my life working as a PM, and other computer science video advice. Let's jump right into the first question that you might be asking yourself. Is tech right for me? This is a pretty big question, but I did want to tackle it first because it's the primary thought going through a lot of people's head, and mine included. When you think of success and what that means as a computer science major after you graduate college, the most common idea is going to be, hey, let me go work in a big tech company as a software engineer and I'll live out all my dreams with high compensation and a good work-life balance. You're probably thinking of Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Meta as the big tech companies that you're really buying a spot for in. It's really hard to answer is tech right for you with a blanket statement because there's a lot of nuance that goes into this. With a company large enough, there will be some product or service that fits into your interests, goals, and niche. But what about the flip side? Not everyone wants to work at a large company in the first place, and also if you're coming in as an intern or new grad, there's a pretty unlikely chance that you'll be placed on one of those teams that actually does fit your interests and roles, and instead you'll just be placed on one of the flagship software or products because that's what makes them the most money, and that's where they need people the most. When you also think a large company, there's a lot of office politics, bureaucratic or red tape, processes that are ingrained into the company and that you can't really change, and there's also just the feeling of being a small cog in a giant machine like a big tech company. Bottom line is, what works for one person and what necessarily work for you, I highly encourage you to take the things you care about such as compensation, prestige, slash name brand, work-life balance, etc., and rank all these things on how important they are to you. This will give you a good sense of what kinds of companies might be the best fit for you and where you actually want to spend your time recruiting rather than just trying to apply everywhere and end up unhappy if you don't get that one offer from that one company. The second big question that you're probably asking yourself as a computer science major is, do I have to leak code? No, you don't. This ranges on a spectrum, of course. There are some companies that only use these kinds of leak code algorithmic style questions to do all their interview screening, and other companies that don't do any sort of leak code screening at all. Instead, they usually offer take-home projects or some sort of larger coding project that isn't solely reliant on you being able to focus and finish a problem within a given 30 to 45 minutes. You probably also need to go ahead and explain all the decisions that you've made, and this can be an even longer process, such as a couple of hours or a couple of days, depending on your competency and the difficulty of the task. Or the third option is also just entering the tech industry in a no-code role in the first place. I'll talk a little bit more about no-code roles in a separate video, but they do exist, they are out there, and just because you are a CS major doesn't mean you have to pursue a lifetime of coding afterwards. Being good at leak code though doesn't necessarily mean that you're a good programmer and vice versa, although there certainly is something to be said about some correlation between the two. If you want to enter the big tech companies as a software engineer, you're going to have to buckle up in leak code. However, if you're not really interested in those roles and you're looking more for something at a mid-size or smaller company, then there's a much greater chance you're going to be asked a non-leak coding style interview question or offered one of these take-home projects instead. The third thing you may ask yourself is, I feel like I don't really know anything. Is this normal? Absolutely, 100% yes. I've said it before and I'll say it again that a lot of people in industry have a career longer than you've been alive. So there is a lot of on-the-job knowledge and skills that they've gained over the course of their career that you just simply haven't had the time to experience yet or fully understand or comprehend or learn or whatever it may be compared to them. And at some point you cross the magical realm from not knowing anything to suddenly knowing things. If you're generally a nice person and ask a lot of questions, people will be happy to chat with you and share their learnings and knowledge. A good supportive manager, whether in your internship or full-time role, should also be able to point you in the right direction of any further learning that you should pursue that might be relevant to your role, or also help you find a mentor that may be suitable and that you would connect well with. If you're looking at this from the college standpoint, then it's also totally normal because the vast majority of people also have never coded before in their life prior to entering college. I was one of those people that I had never coded before, I was absolutely terrified, and I still ended up fine. If it doesn't feel that way, then it's probably these slightly overconfident or cocky people who feel like they're really, really good at programming that are speaking up a little bit too much and overwhelming the conversation. The fourth question you may ask yourself is, do I need to have an internship? On the side of yes, an internship is going to be pretty helpful for a couple of reasons. It's going to get your foot in the door in future resume screens, it's going to give you that experience and industry knowledge for a couple of weeks, and you also get the chance of your return offer to that company if you did well enough. The more time that you get to spend acclimating to industry, the easier it's going to be when you actually get to the full-time role and you have to spend that time onboarding, but luckily if you have a couple of internships under your belt, you're already pretty familiar with the onboarding process and how to quickly get up to speed and set everything up. On the side of no though, an internship doesn't guarantee you anything. 
you're not guaranteed a return offer and you're not guaranteed to pass the next resume screen any better than the next candidate might be. It just gives you a slight edge up. There are plenty of people that graduate from college as a CS major without any internships and they still end up finding that full-time job. I think job hunting is really just a function of luck above all. So if you are graduating soon or you just haven't landed an internship yet, there's still plenty of things you can do. There are side projects, hackathons, research, tutoring, TAing, or a coding instructor, for example. And that's just a handful of ways that you can get technical knowledge and demonstrate proficiency and interest in technology without necessarily being in an internship role. The fifth and last question that you might be scratching your head about is what classes are important for me to take and what should I really be focusing on over the course of my four years at university? There's also not gonna be a right answer here on what's gonna be the best and most helpful class for you moving forward and into industry. Of course, when you're looking at technical interviews, people are always gonna say data structures and algorithms are gonna be the fundamental classes that you need to be better at lead coding and better understand what these things are asking you. I won't disagree there because data structures and algorithms really do teach you the key things you need to know and it'll make your life a lot easier once you have taken these classes and you try lead coding all over again. But besides those two, the best advice that I can give here is to take a smattering of classes from different subjects and use this opportunity to figure out what's actually interesting to you. For your 300 or 400 level classes, there's really only so many of these that you can take, but I find that they often do dive into pretty interesting concepts. Although my main focus was security and most of the classes in the upper division that I did take were security focused, I still took the chance to explore a couple other topics. For me, the classes I enjoy the most outside of my security electives are going to be advanced web dev, inclusive design, cloud application development, and networks of biology. All these are great hands-on projects that help me get into the nitty-gritty details of each topic, and I really learned a lot in each of these classes, and I'm really glad that I took them outside of my security elective focus. It'll definitely also be helpful to take into consideration the person who is teaching these classes in addition to the contents of the course. A good instructor or professor can really make or break your enjoyment of the class. And out of the four classes that I mentioned, two of them are taught by the same instructor and who generally just has a great reputation at my university and everyone universally loves him. I'm sure that there are plenty of other questions you might have as a current computer science major or even incoming computer science major. Let me know in the comments down below if you do have any other questions. Otherwise, you can always schedule a cop chat with me at ak.ms slash chat with Laura or join the conversation on my Discord link in the description box down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you again next week for a brand new video. Bye.